I'm sorry, huh? Remember those words. Hi everybody, it's me Keisha Sharp and I'm coming to you today with another screen story. Now this one is about the show Lethal Weapon. The episode is called Brotherly Love and it was written by the amazingly talented Stacey Littlejohn and also our showrunner was an also amazingly talented Matt Miller. <laughs> so this particular episode was the first time we get to see Trish in her job. So we've seen her as an amazing mother, as an amazing wife, but who was she in her career, in her job? Now, she was a defense attorney who fought, this was her mantra, who fought for the people who couldn't fight for themselves. And so for her, it was a mission. It was her purpose, one of her purposes in life. So when they wrote this episode, I was really excited about it because I got to see, oh, who is she in her job? I want to see what she does because it was the first time. So we get on set. The scene I'm going to show you is the scene that I shot, the first scene I shot for this episode. And... The incredible thing about it is I came in with an idea of who I thought Trish was in her job. I, and I thought she was aggressive, but I also thought she was a bit soft because it's who she is. Soft meaning um, not soft in the sense of, I'm trying to think of the right example of you can get more with honey, as they say, than lemon. So I walk in and I'm, I'm finding that fine line between being aggressive, but also being soft. And so I remember after our first take, Stacy saying to me, Oh, we want her to be more aggressive. And I thought, are you sure? Because <laughs> I'll give it to you. <laughs> Is that if that's what we, we see her? She said, yeah, that's how we see her. And that for me was such a click for me because I thought, of course she is. Of course she is. She's not going through defending people that could not defend themselves by being meek. She had to be aggressive. She had to in order to save them. And so I love that note. I took that note and I ran with it. And the funny part about it, my scene partners, Damon Williams and Clayton Crawford, um, were shocked by the aggression that Trish had. But it was, it was great. It was a wonderful realization, a revelation for myself. Um, and for them, um, they had a ball playing against her. Um, and this is that scene. And... Uh, I'm curious what you think about her aggression. Let me know. So here we go. This is the first thing. Don't you understand the concept of yeah, that? You the question what you is, is the... do you? Yeah. Hey, what's up, Trish? Hey, baby. Hmm. What a surprise. Well, I'll tell you what a surprise is. Finding out that my husband and his partner arrested one of my clients. Dino is your client. Uh, I said I remember that name, remember? I don't recall it. How do you forget a young man that I not only defended, but mentored. I put a lot of time into that boy, and I'll be damned if I let you undo it. Uh, Trish, I'm not judging your mentoring skills at all, but the young men did plug down on me, so. Oh, yeah? Well, I saw the little report you filed. If you're lucky, I won't ask the judge to have you two officially apologize before it gets dismissed. You look tall, Trish. Yes. And there's radiant. A, there's a statue, like you, and you have this. You're working that. Oh, working. The only thing I'm going to be working is the law that you two repeatedly abused on my client. It was Rick's fault. Mm. By the time I got there, baby, all the infractions had already been committed. I simply provided handcuffs. Stop. Turn off the cameras and recorders in there. Yes. I need to spend some alone time with my client. Now, the next scene, small scene, but it's one of those scenes where you really get to see her with her client. And for her, it's not just a client. It's someone she gets to know and someone she loves and this particular young man was someone that she had mentored so it's someone that she had invested a lot of time and love because she believed in him so I love them showing this part of her when she goes into the interrogation room because she's still kind of motherly to him but also like a mother would be it's I need to be I need to discipline you and really see the truth so here's that scene we said we'd never meet like this again. And I didn't do anything. I want to believe you, Dino. Mrs. Murtaugh, you have known me since I was 15 years old. I would not lie to you. Not to you. Good. Now, tell me everything. Next scene, very small, but it's really telling. Once she believes that he's still on the right course and she 
believes him, there's no way anyone will stop her from defending him. And so this is that little bit, this little bit of scene that's happening next will show you there's no movement. There's no, no room for, for anything but right and wrong. And she's on the right side of that. And here's that scene. You two made a mistake. Dino's clean. Turn over another stone. This is why I love you. I mean, how do you get that big old heart into that tiny little perfect body? He's innocent. <laughs> why? Because he says he is? It's a pretty good reason. Is it Trish? I'm sorry we didn't tell you he was a suspect. I honestly forgot. But I'm sorry to tell you that he is guilty. I'm sorry, huh? Remember those words. You'll be using them again. See you two at the arraignment. Now, the next scene I'm going to show you is when she actually goes into the courtroom. And I loved this scene because this is the first time we see Trish in the courtroom. And just so you know, a little background, when you're shooting a courtroom scene, it takes a really long time, hours and hours, because you have to, as a director, and if you don't know much about that, when you watch things from one, one side of the camera, all of those things need to be shot in sequence, because we already have the light set up, and we already have the camera set up in one direction. So, that's the direction in which we have to shoot everything. So it, we're shooting out of context, you know. And then we have to turn around and then shoot everything again from this angle. So, and that's not even including all the close-ups, medium shots, side shots, all the, the, you know, cool, maybe cool shots you can get in there. Or it's just a lot of work. And so, but for a scene that takes less than five minutes, I'm just so proud of our <laughs> crew they don't get enough love. They do so much work. So shout out to the crews out there who are picking up those cameras, who are moving the lights, who are holding the lights, who are holding the cameras. It's just we could not do it without them. So shout out to the cast and crew and the crew who never gets a shout out or not enough. So this is that scene. You finally get to see her in the courtroom and, um, you know, questioning someone she also loves. You know, she loved Riggs, but she needed to get to the truth. And the truth is sometimes more important than your relationships with, with people. It's about getting to the truth. So here's that scene. Hey, guys. First of all, forgive me for earlier. And this is just a formality, so just try to keep it friendly, okay? <laughs> Martin, would you like to come over to dinner tonight? No, he would not. I know what? what you're trying to do. Don't what? think I don't know. Relax, Roger. Tell him to relax. I was just telling him to relax. And yes, Trish, dinner sounds lovely. Thank you. Perfect. See? Detective Riggs, how did you ID my client? We had a DNA sample. A tainted sample that doesn't conclusively ID him. Did you have a warrant to search his locker? Uh, no, but when I Did you identify yourself as a police officer? Absolutely. Did you show him your badge? I would have, but I couldn't find it at that particular time. But I did find it later, so uh, we're good on. Tainted sample, warrantless search. Any legal grounds for this arrest? Look, you can split all the legal hairs you want. We had his DNA, we had the clothes that he was wearing, and we know his M.O. We all felt that he was guilty. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. You feel he's guilty. OK, so what does that feel like, huh? A tickle in the back of the throat or a twitch of the eye. You're more than a feeling, Trish. You know who had a feeling? Mr. Brandt, when he saw a strange, unkept, armed man burglarizing his locker. Well, the part you're leaving out is that your client pulled a gun and out. And where was your partner during all of this? Hmm? Or did you go there alone so you could violate my client's constitutional rights without a witness? My partner was detained, and uh, he was later arriving to the scene. Oh, okay. Detained doing what? Sometimes we find more success in divide and conquer. So where was your partner? Well, we had several leads that uh, we needed to follow, and I- Your Honor, Detective Riggs is being evasive. He has a reputation for going rogue and not following procedure. Because of his unwillingness to tell the truth under oath, I move to have this case dismissed immediately. Trish, he's guilty. Come on. Give me the truth, Riggs, or are you even capable? 
Listen, I... Detective, you're withholding information. I left my partner behind because... Answer the question. Because... Where was your partner? He had heart problems earlier today. Trish, and I was worried about him. Anything else, Detective? Well, I guess I won't be swinging by dinner tonight. Okay, so the last scene I'm going to show you is the one where Trish is with her client um, and you realize that it wasn't him that committed the crime. It was actually his brother. And I love this scene because this scene really shows you just how much she believed in what she she did for a living you know it's like that part of her the soft part of her that wants the best for everyone and especially this young man who she fought so hard for throughout his life because she saw something special in him and because of that it helped him be the best he could be I did my best to keep him away from that life i swear everybody makes their own decisions Nothing you can do about that. He, he's not cut out for prison, though. They're going to eat him up in there. If he testifies against Angelo, I'll cut him a deal with the DA. He will. You have my word. Okay. Hey. I'm sorry. I feel like I let you down. You did what you had to do. I will never forget how you cared enough to put time into me, I swear. All I can say is thank you for looking out for me once again. Thanks for trusting me. Hey, thank you for being someone that I could trust. Yeah. Okay. I'm proud of you. I think that if we all gave a little bit of our time to those who are struggling, that they could see that they're worth something and imagine what they can become if you put a little bit of time and love and belief in them, what could they be? And so that's a really, Trish and I, those two characters, it's the closest, this character actually was the closest to me as a person. And so this particular scene meant a lot to me um, just to show what you can do to sh change people's lives. So I hope you enjoyed Screen Stories with Keisha. Um, of course, I'm coming to you every week with a new one and I hope you're enjoying the series. I think it's so interesting to know what's going on behind the scenes and as an actor, what's going on in our heads when we're doing a particular scene. So I hope you're enjoying the series. Remember uh, to subscribe or follow <laughs> and come back next week. Um, I think I might do Cootie Tang next week. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> so I'll see you soon. Have a blessed day and a blessed week. I'll see you soon. Bye.